As you all who cover me often know, most of the time I don't have very good news to share. Today's an exception. I get to smile because we've got some great news to share. I'm here with Nikki Neese, whose father, Roger, is an American hero. He fought in the Pacific Theater in World War II and survived the brutal Bataan Death March, the forced 80-mile march of Filipino and American prisoners of war by the Japanese Army. He was awarded numerous medals for his meritorious service. Mr. Nees died in 2007. But in April 2012, the home he shared with his wife was burglarized. Besides a television set and other valuables taken, they took a jewelry box which contained the medals that he earned in World War II. Minneapolis police were able to find one of the burglars through a fingerprint and our, officers ch and our office charged him with burglary. Last fall, Josh Larson, who's here with me today, prosecuted the case and obtained a guilty verdict. Before he was sentenced, Nikki stood up in court and gave her victim's impact statement. Let me stop for a second and talk about victim impact statements. They're a wonderful device that allows the court to understand the impact of crime. It also allows the victim and their family to participate in this process, which sometimes is very, very difficult. Well, Nikki gave such a great statement that at the conclusion of it, there wasn't a dry eye in the courtroom. And the burglar was sentenced and he served his sentence. Early this summer, he completed his sentence. Sometime thereafter, his lawyer called Mr. Larson and said, we need to get together. I've got something for you. And at that time, when they got together, the lawyer brought this case and these medals. And so it's my absolute privilege and delight to give Nikki her father's medals. Nikki? In mid to late 2000, when my father became ill, I moved him and my mother into my home across the street where all of his needs could be met in one level of my home. My grandmother, who lived with them since the mid-90s, still resided in their home. My mother, being a caretaker, was continually between our homes. This was supposed to be a temporary solution. While my father and mother were in the midst of applying for a B VA benefit, to aid in making their home handicap accessible to accommodate my father's growing health deterioration. Unfortunately, my father passed away in October 2007. Then, just shy of a year of the anniversary of his death, my grandmother had passed away in October 2008. My mother continued between homes and started the demolition and remodel of her home to return permanently once feasible. In April 2012, my mother spent a full week taking care of my children without returning back to her house. I was spending time with my best friend and her family while her father was on life supports. The evening before my father's friend passed away, I returned home and my mom said she was going to her home to get some rosaries and prayer cards and catch up on things at her house for a few hours. It was not even five minutes later and I could hear her screaming and yelling. Knives fell from the door and the phone was ripped out of the wall. Immediately we called 911. I cannot begin to tell you or paint a vivid picture of what she had to visit and door. Not only did she, they clean out her belongings, heirlooms and collectibles, they ransacked files and pictures. Not to mention they scattered my father's and grandmother's funeral programs and prayer cards all over. Some of them were left with footprints and ripped to pieces. After witnessing the magnitude of their destruction and the devastation it caused my mother, it transformed her from being a trusting and outgoing to inter introverted and doubtful of everyone and her surroundings. She lost every single heirloom and precious memory my father and grandmother had to leave behind. Not to lose sight of why I'm here today, a good portion of my impact statement was about my father's war medals. After speaking with Josh Larson and my mother, I was compelled to give an impact statement and read my dad's handwritten collection of his experience as a prisoner of war. I felt the court, as well as the convict, needed to hear my dad's voice and realize that if it was not for men like my father, he would not have the rights he was given that day. These tokens my dad received for his valor 
versus his physical and emotional scars from his war experience. I wanted him to understand he didn't just take medals. He took a legacy that was left to share with his children and grandchildren to keep his memory alive. So today I would like to thank the Minneapolis Police Department's 2nd Precinct and the officers who responded to the call and didn't just simply file a report but went the extra mile and called in a forensic team to take pictures and fingerprints and were ultimately able to identify Christopher Burgess as the man responsible. Without their efforts, none of this would be possible. I would like to give a special thanks to the officers, David Campbell, Officer Josh Otto, Officer Joe Dittman, for their sensitivity in handling the case. Last but not least, and on behalf of my father's two youngest grandchildren and his namesakes, as well as my mother and I, I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to the prosecuting attorney, Josh Larson, and the victim's advocate, Carmen Cairo, along with the Hennepin County attorney, Mike Freeman, for bringing justice to our family and assisting the return of these precious medals my father earned as a war hero, which there was no amount of money which this could be replaced. All I can say today is having these medals back in my hand is a true miracle. Thank you. Questions? Who was the defense attorney who initiated contact with the prosecutor? Matt Jamet, J-A-I-M-E-T. How long was the sentence that uh, Burgess served? Burgess served uh, 365 days in the workhouse. Mickey, if you could just tell us a little bit about your dad and also, um, obviously he was a survivor of one of the most infamous uh, events of World War II. Uh, did he talk about that? And, and what did it mean to him to have those medals? My dad was not um, a person that liked to talk about it. If you'd ask questions, he would share some. I know, um, actually, I just found out about a month ago, my, my uncle, Kelvin Niece, and my dad were both surviving siblings from the Bataan Death March. Um, and ironically, my uncle's medals were stolen a few months back as well. Um, the pain that he suffered and the emotional scars, I know my dad, his legs were so badly beaten, he would never wear shorts or anything in the summertime. It could be dead hot. And he was so ashamed of his scars, he never wanted to show them. Um, he'd get actually very quiet when he'd start to talk about them. His medals, he, um, we talked about it. Me being the only girl, and I was very close to my dad. Um, they were always mine, but they were just kind of left at my mom and dad's house until things got, you know, taken care of with my mom and the remodel. He was just a really good man and just never, he never bragged about anything, but he didn't, he also didn't like to talk about negative things. Can you just tell us what, what was your reaction when you first, how did you find out that they... When the forensics team um, was in the house, we were going through and um, my mom's jewelry box, which had pocket watches, jewelry, the medals were in there and everything was gone. Um, to me, that was the first, the first painful thing that I, I mean, I felt sorry for my mother, but my dad's medals, my dad meant everything to me. And to see those gone, um, I, I can't even tell you. And what was your reaction? How did you find out that they got in the back? And what was your reaction? I, I couldn't believe it. Um, when I talked to Josh, I absolutely could not believe it. Um, it was a miracle. All I can say, it's, it's nothing short of a miracle. And absolutely, my mom, I know when I was talking and I was very upset about the medals and upset about my dad. Um, she said, well, Nikki, just keep praying, keep praying, keep the faith. You never know what could happen. And this truly, truly is a miracle. I think these medals long? back. Can you tell me what it feels like to have these medals back? Does it feel like you have a part of your father? Yes. Um, it's a huge, huge ordeal for me um, having these medals back because my son, I named my, my son Roger after my dad, and I have something to pass down to him and tell him a story, just not 
the pictures, but actually have a story and have something that he can hold and feel that was actually pinned on my dad. Um, I'm so proud of my dad and everything that he's accomplished in his life to be able to hand this down to, to my son and also to teach my son and my children that what people have had to go through to serve this country so they have the rights and the equality as, as American citizens. Mickey, how many medals did your dad earn and, and were all of them stolen and were all of them recovered? Um, no, not all of them were recovered. Um, but for the most part, these were the Bronze Star was a huge one of my father's that um, is the most important. So the Bronze Star and other, and other medals other from medals. the Death March? Some um, of these U.S. issued medals? Some are U.S. issued me medals and some are also from the Philippines. Let me ask you this. This man served a year in the workhouse. He had a lot of time to think about what he'd done. Um, what would you say to this man if you had a chance to about returning your father's medal? Honestly, I could not answer that right now. I couldn't. What did your dad do uh, what, for uh, work when he was alive? Um, he worked for the U.S. government. Um, I just like to ask the prosecutor, um, when you got that phone call, when, you get, you when, 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 when you got the phone call, I mean, you obviously done a lot of cases and a lot of people have very, you know, very important things stolen. I mean, what was your reaction when you got that phone call? Restitution is an element of every sentence we try to have in every criminal case that involves victim loss. Almost always we can never return what was taken. In this particular case, when I found out that it was going to be these medals, and that's something that Miss Niece had talked to us about from the first moment that Carmen Cairo met Miss Niece and uh, communicated to her the significance of them, it really was uh, something like a miracle. I just, I couldn't believe it myself and I needed to put my eyes on them. And so shortly thereafter, uh, Mr. Jame and I did meet with the, the judge in the case, uh, uh, Judge Luis Bartolome, and that's when uh, Mr. Jame showed me the medals and I immediately uh, found uh, uh, Nikki's phone number to make sure that she knew and then we just made sure to get them back to her as soon as it, it, uh, it was possible. Has anything like this ever happened? Um, not typically, not typically. But you know, most things that people steal, they're either um, fenced, broken, or used, or sold, or something. Uh, obviously, these precious and rarely, uh, rarely given medals aren't something that uh, probably has a, are easily sold. And so somehow they were retained uh, and given back. So no, it's first time I would say in many years. I wouldn't say that Mr. Jamey shared with me that the suspect had a change of heart. Uh, that all Mr. Jamey, we can infer that. Mr. Jamey was careful to tell me that a birdie dropped them off at his office. Did you make a specific plea for the medals in your victim impact statement? In fact, I made a plea for those medals throughout the entire pendency of the case. And uh, in any given case, there's a number of elements you try to look for in a sentence, whether this be punishment, deterrence, rehabilitation, or restitution. Some cases, restitution is far more important. In this case, it was, and I had made that clear from day one, but at that time, the defendant apparently didn't care. In my words, didn't matter. It was Nicole Niece's words that mattered on November 30th. That's what I think changed this. Do you think it was her victim impact statement? I think so, yes, absolutely. His attorney, Burgess's attorney, just said a birdie dropped him off. He didn't go any specific and details whatsoever. With a wink, yes. Is your mother still alive? Yeah. What has been her reaction? Um, very relieved. Um, she still is. A lot was taken. A lot. Um, so this this really is a miracle i know when she had spoke with josh she's a very she's a woman of faith and she was very very pleased 
and to pass that legacy down to us children that we have to keep the faith and keep praying because miracles really do happen. Who was Burgess the date that he was let out of jail? Mr. Burgess received a five-year uh, stayed prison sentence. He was let. He had to serve a year in the workhouse, and then I believe complete treatment. He was let out of custody on June June eighteenth, two thousand thirteen. And so, when did you get the call? Uh, it was I believe it was August. How much time did he actually spend in the workhouse? Assuming he was sentenced to three hundred sixty-five days, and under Minnesota law, he receives two third. He has to serve two thirds of that, and received one third as good time. Was he on work release or was he in there 24-7? I think he was in there 24-7. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thanks, Chuck.